Okay, welcome back. In today's episode, I got three games for you. Now, I got these games off eBay and from different vendors, and they all claim to be not working or for part to repair. So, first up here, I got a Dragon Warrior 4. Now, in one of my previous episodes, I did repair a Dragon Warrior 3 by swapping the work ram chip. And in this case, the, the seller tells me that it locks up during the battles. So, what I'm going to do is I'm start the game, get to the battle, and sure enough, it does lock up. So, um, I've never experienced anything like this before. So, let's get this card open and see what's going on. By the looks of the exterior, the card is in good shape. It was well kept. So, I don't know why these games tend to fail like this. So, let me open it up. I, I suspect that the inside is just as clean as the out. Of course, everything looks in order here. And I don't see anything wrong. Off camera, I did probe for continuity across all these uh, pins and all these chip legs and it seems to be fine so I'm gonna be looking at these two chips here so on my phone quickly I here's the website that I use and I can see the PCB boards and the ROMs that are the basically the information of the game and I can scroll down to the bottom here and I can see the program chip the ROM chip or the RAM chip rather and of course if there's any other various chips on this board I, I can see the specs and of course the U2 that's the RAM chip the character RAM chip that can be replaced and the work RAM chip is also an S RAM chip that can be replaced they're actually the same chip so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the work RAM chip and if that doesn't work I'm gonna swap the character RAM chip So I'm going to start by laying down some flux just so when I use my desoldering gun the solder just tends to uh, work a lot better. It doesn't fight you. It tends to remove and clear a lot easier. Even after you cleared all the holes you, you it still takes a little finesse to get the chip to come loose. But uh, you don't want to tear at the chip. You, you want to really even if you have to add some more solder to the chip and then retry with the desoldering gun again. You don't want to be tearing at the chip because you'll pull up uh, a trace or a through hole and you really don't want to do that. It's more work to patch that. So I have these generic SRAM chips and these are Fujitsu brand. Uh, but in the early 90s, Nintendo had many different distributors. So oftentimes you'll open up a game, even if it's the same game, you'll see different brandings on the chips. Sometimes they're Motorola, Sony, Fujitsu, Mosul, many different uh uh, brands but they're all pretty much the same so they they can be interchanged with each other So with the new chip in place, the cartridge clean and dry, let's see if this works. So let me jump ahead a bit and skip all the words and talking. Let's get right to the battle. So the game is still locking up, so the next order of business is to swap out the character RAM. Also keep in mind that I am pulling out new chips um, to replace these old chips but the old chips if this doesn't fix my problem I put them aside and I save them because they can if they're still in working order I can use them for other cartridges.
So after swapping the work ram and the character ram, this this still locks up during the battles. So there's only one chip that I can swap that left that I can swap is the MMC chip. So on this game, the MMC chip is an MMC 1B3, but on the cart profile website it lists uh, an MMC 1B2. So I, I believe that both chips they're the same. Maybe the three is a later revision of the same chip. I don't think they have different functionality or anything. So I am going to swap it with a 1B2. Plus since the cart database lists a 1B2, I know that it is compatible. I'm, I'm not, I can't mess anything up. So let's see what's going on. Let's see if it works. So I never could get this game to work, so uh, that's a spoiler. I'll show you later on in the video where, where, where it locks up at. Um, but as of right now, in, on video, you're just seeing me reflow the program ROM chip. This was a desperation attempt to try to get it to work, and unfortunately it still didn't work. So if, you, if you're more knowledgeable than I, please comment down below, help me out if there's a solution out there. Um, as of right now, it's beyond my understanding how to fix this game, but if it could just be a bad uh, program ROM and there is no fix. So yeah, now I'm struggling to get the cart in without the sleeve around the cart, without the shell. It's tough. So just jump cut a bit to save some time, get to the battle. It's going to lock up. So yeah, this I don't I always have a 100% success rate. I know you, some people on YouTube, they only post the videos that they can get the games to work. And that's not genuine to me. If I get a lot of games, if I can't get some of them to work, I'll just post my progress. And maybe somebody can even comment where I went wrong on the video and then I could just backtrack my work and revisit the cart and get it to work. So now I got a copy of F-Zero and the seller says that it was untested not working something to that fashion and this game seems to be working just fine i'm gonna play a little bit of it see what's going on if there's anything out of the ordinary but yeah it from what i see right now everything is okay so the only explanation that i can have for this cart being in good condition working condition rather is some some Super Nintendos are dirtier than others uh, from over time some pin connectors wear out or just get more grungier than others now my test bench here I just refurbed it a couple of weeks ago so the pin connector is really clean it it tends to read cartridges on the first click every time so maybe the seller had a, just a, a, a connector that was dodgy and then read this game right off the bat and they gave up on it and they sold it that's just the way eBay is sometimes. You'll buy something as untested or not, not working, and sometimes it's working just fine. You, you, you'll buy, you're, you're most likely buying it from an elderly person or somebody who just bought it at a garage sale or found it in their garage or attic, and they really don't have the time to test it or they don't have the, the hardware to test things, and they just sell it as untested. So I, I always weigh the pros and cons, The if I should purchase something, if, if it's... If something is untested and listed at 20% of its value or less, or even 30 or 40%, I might take a chance on buying it just because if I can get it to work, I can make a decent a score. So I can make it, it'll, it'll make for an interesting video and I can add something to my collection that I otherwise wouldn't buy at full price. So while I'm in here, I got this card opened up, I may as well test the voltage on the battery. So it's reading 3.29, so this battery is just fine. I'm going to close this cartridge up and on to the last game. So 
So last up here we have uh, Spike McFang. Now I never heard of this game before, but when I looked it up, it was a pretty pricey game. So I'm hoping that I can get this one to work, just because I couldn't get the Dragon Warrior to work. And if I could get this one to work, it can offset the cost of the Dragon Warrior. So I'm going to try to tinker with the card a bit, see if I can get it to fire up, if I get anything out of it. And oddly enough, from what I saw on the eBay listing, not to spoil anything, but this game really shouldn't fire up. From what I, when I open this game up, you're going to look at what's, what's on the inside of this cartridge. And I'm actually very impressed that this game fired up. But nonetheless, let me get a little further, see if the, I can actually get into the gameplay. So level 99, experience maxed out, and everything maxed out. That's totally normal. Numbers cut off in 2 and 3. And of course, it locks up. But oddly enough, again, the sound still is, continues. The, the audio is still going. Uh oh, this cartridge is in absolute terrible condition and I have so many questions that I need answers to right now. Where's the battery? What happened to the resistor leg? Why? How did this chip sustain so much rust? What's going on? Who, hel who, were th who was the previous owner of this game? What the hell? <laughs> Even looking back at the footage, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to even do voiceover for this video. Just look at this cartridge, how awful it is. And, and seeing it play back on your screen as I'm looking at it now. Oh my god. I can't believe I, can't believe I purchased this game. So the fortunate thing is this ROM chip seems to be okay and it doesn't have rust and that's the only one that's important. So I'm going to use a donor cart. I have an NFL quarterback club that I got a couple of months ago in another lot. And I'm going to use this board to just swap the, RAM, the ROM chips. And of course, with my luck, this cart is ugly as hell too. So I actually have to run down to the store and get another game. But here's the board revision, SHVC1A1M11. Both boards are identical. So I was working on this cartridge late in the day and it was almost closing time so I had to run down there really quick. It was I think it was less than 15 minutes to close and I found the last copy of Quarterback Club and I didn't even browse or anything. The store owner looked at me, probably thought I was a nut when I walked in and left with just this game really quick at closing time. But it is in good shape and now we can finally swap the ROMs. So I'm gonna lay down some flux just to help the desoldering gun desolder these chips a bit easier. And I'll do the same for the donor board. So the original chip came from a really dirty board, so I'm going to just spray it down with some alcohol and just lightly clean the legs here. Now this didn't do much, it just got rid of anything that was loose, any loose rust or debris. So now the chip has a notch on it and the notch also corresponds with the silk screen on the board. Now this board actually accommodates two different size dip package chips. 
So in this case, you don't want to push the chip all the way to the edge of the board. You want to keep it towards the inside. So out of habit, I let these chips cool down before I actually clean them with alcohol because I don't want to shock them. Not that I've experienced any failure this way, it's just something I do. So when I'm done scrubbing the board, I'll take my hot air station and just dry off the alcohol. Now I don't have my hot air station set any any extreme temperature it's at the lowest setting and I'm just using this just to dry off the board also before I close it up I want to see if the battery has three volts and it does so the battery's okay So this was actually a struggle, I had to actually put the camera down before I can get this cartridge in. And for the moment of truth, and it's working. So now we, we got this screen before, let's see if we can actually get into the gameplay. So now this is new, we never actually got to this screen before, so let me fast forward a bit to get to the gameplay. So let me skip at 8x speed. Now this game wants you to read a novel before you could actually control the character. So we finally got to the gameplay and the game seems to be working just fine. And now I just have to figure out what I'm going to do with the exterior shell. I got to clean it up a bit. And um, in the end of this video I'll show you how to do that. So here's one final view of the board. I really like how this turned out. So now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with the exterior shell. So here's the original back. Now this is too far gone. I don't wanna waste time trying to clean this. This is too yellow or brown, rather. So the front face plate of the game, the Spike McFan game, and the original back, they're actually two different colors. So even if I did clean it, it would still be an off brown compared to the front. So what I'm gonna use is the donor cartridge. Now the donor cartridge only has two rental stickers on it. So I'm just going to peel this off and I'm, I'm sure I can get this residue off. Now here's the front face of the game. Now it is dirty but I don't want to get too aggressive with this 99% alcohol. So what I'm going to do is just clean what I can on the plastic, the brown parts, as best I can. And I'm not going to get too crazy on the label. Now these labels for the Super Nintendo games and, and original Nintendo games, they're better quality than N64 games. But even still I don't want to get too crazy on the front label. So here's the front and the back. Now they're still a little off in color, but I'm still happy with that. And I still have a lot to clean, as you can see in the ridges there. There's like crud build up in the creases. So I'm gonna actually clean that with some crud cutter and after I close it up. So I wanna close everything up, make sure everything is solid, and then I can detail the cartridge a little better. 
So here's the product that I use, it's called Crud Cutter, and it's this one is actually to remove rust. I actually have another variant that removes um, dirt and grease, and I should have used that variant instead. This one is, since this was rust stains, I figured it would work better, but the other one worked just the same. The only difference is the, the rust variant has an awful smell to it. So then with 99% alcohol, I detailed it a little bit further, and here's how it turned out. Now the front and the back still are off a bit. On the camera you might not be able to make that out. But I really like how this turned out. It still looks way better than how it was. So this took me about 15 minutes to clean this cartridge. So I didn't want to waste time showing 15 minutes of me scrubbing a cartridge or cleaning a cartridge. So if I'm going to take time to edit these videos, I want to make sure that I get as much information in a short amount of time to not waste anybody else's time. In closing, I hope you liked this video. I was going to use the last cartridge as the only cartridge in this video, but the first cartridge obviously I had footage of and I did so much work on. And just to prove that I don't have a 100% success rate, not everything I can, I can fix. So just keep that in mind, that's the way it is. And with the second cartridge, eBay, that's the way it is sometimes. You buy something, it works just fine. Third cartridge, obviously needed a board swap. But nonetheless, I hope you like this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And once again, thank you for watching.